There's a lot of hype about the new M4 iPad Pro, and while I'm excited for the latest iPad release, there's one thing I couldn't stop thinking about the entire time I was watching this presentation. We just got the latest specs on the new M4 chip, which means that we're all but certain to get some brand new M4 Max and an entire new M4 Mac lineup. And that might be a shock to you considering that the oldest M3 Mac was released just six months ago and the latest M3 MacBook Air was released just two months ago. So now with the M4 kind of out there, let's talk about the future M4 Mac roadmap because I think we can glean a lot about Apple's future plans for the M4 Mac lineup and how they might completely change the upgrade process for the M4 chip and how we may never see an M3 Mac Studio, Mac Pro, or Mac Mini. So first let's talk about this M4 chip and what it is. And when we really look at the M4 chip, we can see there may be some areas where the M4 gets a pretty significant jump in performance over the M3, despite the M3 only being a six month old chip. First of all, CPU seems like an area where the M4 is going to get some marked improvements for the base level chip because Apple for the first time is bumping up that CPU core count on the base M series chips from eight CPU cores to 10 CPU cores. However, these additional cores are not being added to the more powerful performance cores, but rather to the energy saving high efficiency cores. Now, while you may look at that and think that wouldn't lead to a substantial performance bump, Apple says that the M4 will have a 50% performance increase over the M2, but we really don't have to wonder how much that will translate to real world usage because guess what? We already have some leak benchmarks from that M4 iPad Pro and boy oh boy, this thing is crazy powerful. Just look at these Geekbench scores, 3,607 for the single core score and 14,677 for the multi-core score. That's 22% faster in single core performance and 25% faster in multi-core performance. For reference, this M4 chip isn't an iPad Pro and that is faster than an 11 core M3 Pro chip in a MacBook Pro, in the thinnest Apple product ever. This, this is just, I am, I am sitting here, I am staring at my M3 Max MacBook Pro that I bought six months ago, and I have to be honest, I'm crying a little bit on the inside. I'm a little sad about this. I, I put a lot of money into that MacBook Pro, and I'm looking at these M4 scores, and I'm going, whew, did I make a mistake? Should I have waited? I didn't know. I didn't know the M4 was going to come out this quick. I didn't know. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Pull yourself together, Greg. Pull yourself together. Listen, let me tell you how ridiculous this is. As Max Tech points out on Twitter, this is the fastest consumer chip, in terms of single core performance at least, the fastest consumer chip in the entire world. And it's in a freaking iPad right now. That's insane to me. That is crazy. That is Apple. Stop. It's, this is too much perform. Just stop a little bit. Give the guys a chance to catch up, okay? Let's try some fair competition here. You don't want the government to regulate you. Ooh. Let's move on. Now let's talk about some weirdness with this M4 chip architecture, because you know how the current MacBooks, like the M3 MacBook Air, ship with a weaker binned M3 chip with a lower GPU core count? Well, I think that's about to change, and maybe not for the better, because one thing I noticed about these iPad Pros was that all of the models had the same 10 core GPU, but if you got a 256 gigabyte version or a 512 gigabyte version of that M4 iPad Pro, you actually got a binned M4 chip with less CPU cores. You got one with a nine CPU core and it wasn't one of the high efficiency cores that was disabled. It was actually one of the performance cores that was missing from the M4 chip. So that's kind of significant, I think, in terms of overall CPU performance. We'll see how that plays out when we actually get these iPad Pros. But there is something in that manufacturing process that seems to indicate that there is a higher failure rate this time around on the CPU side of things rather than on the GPU side. And I assume this would probably carry over to the Mac lineup as well. So when Apple launches an M4 MacBook Air, I think those base models will now have weaker CPUs on those bin chips rather than weaker GPUs. Now you may be wondering about that M4 GPU and what the gains are here because Apple was a little vague with any sort of GPU performance gains. However, just like we had a benchmark leak for the M4 CPU, guess what? 
we got a benchmark leak for the M4 GPU on the iPad Pro. And the result shows that the M4 GPU is about 13% faster in GPU performance over the M3. So this is actually a really good all around performance gain for the M4 chip. This is good news for a chip that is coming out basically after six months after the M3. But again, kind of sour news if you bought an M3 MacBook like me, especially if our laptops are gonna get replaced pretty soon. <laughs> I don't like that at all. All right, I, I shouldn't be pessimistic. Let's talk about more good news with the M4. There is an increase in base memory bandwidth for the first time on these base level Apple Silicon chips, now moving from 100 gigabytes of memory bandwidth to 120 gigabytes of memory bandwidth. And Antec points out that this is because Apple is most likely using new LPDDR5X7700 memory modules. That was a mouthful. I think the more interesting thing with this memory bandwidth increase, because it's not that much real. Well, I guess it is kind of a lot considering it's only hundred. It's a pretty big increase, right? But uh, I'm kind of curious to see how this works on the higher end M4 Pro, M4 Max, and M4 Ultra chips, because those could see even higher memory bandwidth increases across the board. Another interesting thing here is that when we look at the M4 chip with this new CPU layout and the increase in GPU performance without a core count increase, it kind of looks like Apple has significantly changed the chip architecture on the M4. This chip is actually an unexpected boost, not only in those neural engine gains, but in CPU and GPU performance as well. And I'm kind of curious to see, again, how beefy the M4 Pro, Max, and Ultra variants perform, because I think it's gonna be even more substantial than the gains we got here. Well, obviously, but I mean like, you know, it's gonna be good. Speaking of that neural engine, it has 38 trillion operations per second. This was basically all the rumors going into the M4 chip was that it was going to be really proficient in AI performance. And yeah, Apple is gearing up for these future M4 Max to also excel at artificial intelligence related tasks, features, and workloads. Right now, all eyes are on WWDC 2024 next month to see what those features may be for iPad OS and Mac OS, but it stands to reason that we are about to see Apple make a major push here for AI features that work on device with these powerful M4 chips. And I wouldn't be surprised to see some exclusive AI features that only work for M4 iPads and Macs with the latest hardware. Now there's also another important thing the release of this M4 chip tells us about the general Mac lineup. And that is that we probably shouldn't expect Apple to release any more M3 Mac variants, which means earlier rumors about the possibility of Apple skipping the M3 Mac Studio, the Mac Pro, and the Mac Mini seem to be right on the money. Let's face it, it would be kind of weird to get hyped over the release of a new M3 Ultra chip when we already know about the M4 chip's existence. And it also means that we may have to wait quite a long time before we see an update to the Mac Studio and the Mac Pro, because based on Mark Gurman's reporting, don't forget, this is the reporter that told us the M4 chip was going to be in the iPad Pro at the last minute. He already has an article out with a pretty concrete set of dates for the next M4 Mac rollouts. And here's where you start to feel a little better about being an M3 Mac owner, Kinda, because according to German, Apple isn't planning on launching M4 Max until the end of 2024 with an introduction of the lower end 14 inch MacBook Pro and 24 inch iMac. Apple also plans to update the high end MacBook Pros with the M4 Pro and Max chip around the same time or in early 2025. And one thing I'm actually hoping for is a release of those MacBook Pros being pushed into the 2020-25 timeframe because there were some early rumors regarding MacBook Pros being released in 2020, 25 that would have an OLED display. Now that may be a long shot considering how long it takes Apple to update display technologies, especially on the Mac and how expensive producing a 14 and 16 inch dual layer tandem OLED panel might be right now. But hey, I would love to see these new OLED displays that we just got on the iPad Pro make its way over to the Mac so if that 2025 launch lines up, maybe I can hold out a little hope. Now for those waiting for an update to the M2 Mac mini, well again, it doesn't seem like the new M3 Macs are coming. So it looks like Apple will skip that update and jump straight to M4, but this could launch by the end of 2024 or again, early 2025. For those of you that just bought an M3 MacBook Air two months ago, well, hey, Apple isn't planning on updating those right away. So German is saying not to expect an update to that for a full year, 
with the MacBook Air getting an M4 in spring of 2025. So I guess that's good news. Now I have really bad news for those of you waiting for a new Mac Studio or Mac Pro. Because of this chip change, it looks like we won't actually see a major update to these Mac desktops for a full year. Garmin says the current plans to launch the M4 Max and Ultra Mac Studio and Mac Pro won't be coming around until the second half of 2025. So yeah, this M4 iPad Pro has really shaken up our expectations for this year on new Mac hardware. I was fully expecting to see some new Mac desktops at WWDC this year, and now it doesn't look like we'll see new Macs until the end of 2024 and we will completely skip over an update for Apple's dedicated desktops like the Mac Mini, Mac Studio, and Mac Pro. But this is what the M4 chip tells us about Apple's future M4 Mac lineup. And let me know, are you excited by this with all the initial performance gains we are seeing in a thin iPad Pro? Or are you disappointed that we won't be getting updates to a lot of Macs this year? Let me know in the comments below. As always, if you like this video, be sure to give me a like. If you wanna see more, make sure you're subscribed. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.